everybody, Michael Valenti here with a School of Self-Defense in Indianapolis. And today I'm going to be discussing the sort of oddity of studying a traditional martial art or a show-based martial art because you are a big fan of Bruce Lee. A quick introduction to my background on the subject is I first started studying Jeet Kune Do, that's Bruce Lee's uh, creation. I started studying Jeet Kune Do when I was about 12 or 13 years old. When I discovered the system, I didn't really know who Bruce Lee was. I uh, was actually introduced to it via a book written by Chris Kent, and he's written tons of books on the subject. Of course, as I began to dive deeper into the philosophies of JKD, I discovered who Bruce Lee was. I learned about him as a martial artist, as a weightlifter, and then, of course, as a movie star. And I think that's how most people are introduced to Bruce Lee is as a movie star. In 2008, I became certified as a Jeet Kune Do Concepts instructor, and I've been running my school ever since. Oftentimes, I will have somebody come into my school for a more traditional art, like Wing Chun or Kenpo, and they'll say that they want to study Wing Chun because they are a big fan of Bruce Lee. I've also seen this when I watch people in more showy-based martial arts, like people who compete in the XMAs, that's extreme martial arts. And it's basically acrobatics with a martial arts flavor. And they'll say, oh yeah, I got into XMAs because I am a big fan of Bruce Lee. I'll see people in a really old school, stilted, traditional karate style. Um, and once again, they'll say, I got into it because I am a big fan of Bruce Lee. And in many ways, I feel like it is a good thing to get into martial arts, and I enjoy most systems of martial arts. There's very few that I would frown upon. But to study a very traditional system or a very showy-based system because you are a fan of Bruce Lee is almost like becoming a Buddhist because you're a big fan of Jesus. That, yeah, they both have good ideas, but you kind of went in a very different direction than the person who inspired you. So let's talk about what Bruce Lee believed in what he taught and how this like shift doesn't make a lot of sense at least to me bruce lee started off teaching traditional kung fu um he called it gung fu but in americanization we just call it kung fu at this point but he started off teaching traditional kung fu eventually evolving that into his own system that he called jun fan gung fu as time went on, he decided that it really wasn't even a system of Kung Fu anymore, and he started referring to it by the term Jeet Kune Do. This early invention of Jeet Kune Do, nowadays we refer to as a longer name as Jun Fan Jeet Kune Do, which is basically our martial historian's way of saying this is the early curriculum of Bruce Lee. Nearing the end of his life, which sadly enough was around his 33rd year, um, he stopped teaching it as a system as a whole, and instead had developed a philosophy that the systemization um, and like writing down of individual techniques and the style of martial arts uh, wasn't the way to go. And he kind of dismantled the Jeet Kune Do as a martial art and instead turned Jeet Kune Do more into a concepts-based system. It's not saying that anybody who does effective martial arts is doing Jeet Kune Do. There's definitely hallmarks of what makes a Jeet Kune Do based system versus a karate based system. But there is no such thing as like an individual Jeet Kune Do technique. So for example, like there is a definitive way that a Shotokan karate practitioner throws a punch, whereas a Jeet Kune Do practitioner, uh, the way they throw a punch may vary from person to person, but the inherent concept will be the same. This comes from the fact that Bruce Lee found that traditional systems did not help people become better fighters, but instead kind of stagnated their abilities. That they serve as a kind of unique jumping off point, but ultimately there is this like almost religious devotion to the system that would ultimately hinder their growth. He had very little respect for a, a traditional way of teaching. He had a very little respect for preserving of tradition in the martial arts world. And if you read any of his writings, he makes it very, very clear that he felt that the more traditional path of martial art was ultimately hindering the development of a martial artist as opposed to helping them grow. He also really frowned upon the more flashy forms of martial arts. Now, of course, to an extent, 
he showed off some flashier martial arts in his movies. You know, there's things where he's doing big, giant spinning kicks to the head. Um, you know, in Enter the Dragon, he does a backflip just for the sake of doing a... No, front flip, for the sake of doing a front flip right at the start of the movie. Uh, but he also was a big believer in realism in cinema, that he was apparently not the biggest fan of Wire Fu. He wasn't the biggest fan of, of you know, a really... I guess, non-realistic way of depicting martial arts. He wanted martial arts to be shown in the realest possible way. The core of his philosophy was this kind of four-part process where he said, research your own experience, absorb what is useful, discard what is useless, and make everything uniquely your own. If you go through this process, you'll see very clearly that it leaves very little room for uh, flashy techniques. Um, I'm going to pick on the XMAs a little bit. That's the extreme martial arts. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look it up after this video and you can see. The XMAs, in my opinion, have effectively done everything they can to move in the opposite direction of where Bruce Lee wanted martial arts to move. Bruce Lee believed that martial arts should be about pr practicality, simplicity, and directness. Whereas we watch the XMAs, it's about how flashy, how ridiculous, how athletic, can the martial arts be? Now, they're very entertaining to watch, they're very fun, but it's effectively a marriage of acrobatics and martial arts, and it's less martial arts, in my opinion. So for somebody to become a big fan of Bruce Lee, who was a um, real champion of simplicity, directness, and um, efficiency in movement, to then go and, stud and do XMAs, um, is really almost going against exactly what he probably would have wanted you to do. Now, of course, I'm not Bruce Lee, nor did I know Bruce Lee. Um, my teacher knew Bruce Lee, but so I can only speak to what I've been told and what I have read, but I don't see really any contradictions. Bruce Lee makes it very clear that martial arts, movement for the sake of movement, is something that he really frowned upon. That for him, it was important to stay in good shape. It was important to be able to uh, use your body athletically, but your martial arts should be very, very simple. For example, for much of his martial arts career, he wasn't a big fan of kicking people in the head because he felt, well, the foot is so far from the head and the fist is so much closer. Why would I not just punch the guy? Same thing goes with a punch versus an eye jab. That his thought was, well, a punch works really well, but an eye jab has three more inches. Um, it moves faster and it hits a more delicate target. So why punch when you could throw an eye jab? Not saying that he never punched, not saying he never threw head kicks, but that was kind of the thought process was it wasn't about constant accumulation, but rather about constant elimination, trying to get the most simplistic and down to its roots version of any uh, study of martial arts. He also really frowned upon the traditional method that when it came to forms, when it came to a regimented, you know, um, like Kenpo, where like there's a technique for if someone grabs you and you do step A, step B, step B, you know, so on and so on and so forth, he really believed in a more simplistic approach. Why do a 37 step process to defend yourself when something like a punch in the face or a kick to the groin or a step on the foot would work every bit as well? So when we look at Bruce Lee's view of traditional martial arts, he was incredibly critical. And I think it was because he came from a very traditional background. Wing Chun um, is a very form-based system. Uh, the Japanese, they call it the kata. But it was very much focused on you study these kind of rehearsed routines and then learn their application. Um, and then, like, that was supposed to be the process. And he said, well, why study this routine at all when you could just learn the application and apply, or even why even learn the application when you can learn the concept behind the application and then apply the concept and just kind of skip out, skip the middleman altogether. That was his general philosophy. He also felt that these traditional systems tended to separate people more so than bring them together. When you read his writings, he makes it very clear that the individual to him was more important than any race, style, or creed, or system, that ultimately there is not a karate way of fighting or a judo way of fighting, that there's just fighting, and that the idea of these individual systems serving um, a function of, you know, karate is better than judo, or judo is better than jujitsu, or whatever it might be, was more of an illusion, because ultimately a fight involves 
um, stand, clinch, ground, and sometimes weapons. So you need to know how to handle stand, clinch, ground, and sometimes weapons. And that the individual system really doesn't matter as much as the individual themselves. And so a system such as um, lots of systems of karate, where everyone wears the same uniform, where everyone stands in a row, where everyone practices the techniques identical to each other, was something he really frowned upon. Because the way he thought about it, at least in his writings, was that you know a 120-pound woman is going to use a very different set of techniques versus a 225-pound man. Um, that a 50-year-old man is going to use a very different set of techniques compared to a 19-year-old man is kind of the idea. And so to have a systemization of techniques and say, well, these, you know, this is the answer to this, this is the answer to that, this is the answer to this, is kind of a, uh, a really false way of looking at fighting because fighting is very chaotic, there's a lot of variables, and you really need to have more of a concept-based way of looking at fighting in order to um, in order to defend yourself. And so, so yes, he definitely had techniques that he taught. He definitely preferred the lead punch. He preferred the lead kick. He uh, really stressed that you blocked and hit simultaneously. But it's it's all very low-level techniques as opposed to something like, for example, like Kenpo that. Um, you know, may have a seven-step process, and that's a technique in and of itself. So he really frowned upon the traditional martial arts. He felt that they stagnated people. He referred to them as the traditional mess or the classical mess a lot of times. And so that's another area where it's like, well, if, if you're a big fan of Bruce Lee, why gravitate towards what he was actively against? And I especially get that with my Wing Chun, that after I became a Jeet Kune Do instructor, I became curious about the roots of Jeet Kune Do, and so I studied Wing Chun, and I really enjoyed it. So I kept studying, and eventually I became an instructor in that as well. And so I have a Wing Chun class, and I don't necessarily see a conflict in that because I don't claim to be, uh, you know, representing Bruce Lee. I just claim to be representing my school. But having said that, I will oftentimes have people come, and I have a Jeet Kune Do class, and I have a Wing Chun class, and I'll have people come to my Wing Chun class because they're a big fan of Bruce Lee. And Wing Chun was Bruce Lee's roots, but it was something that he abandoned and ultimately kind of looked down upon. When you see the end of his career, uh, he'd thrown out the, the Wing Chun forms, no longer teaches those, he stopped doing Chi Sao, he really changed his stance, he no longer stood like Wing Chun, that he stood more like a boxer. If you watch him on the heavy bag, he's not doing Wing Chun punches, he's doing heavy hooks and body hooks and start really favoring the more boxing style. So when you look at Bruce Lee's philosophy, he really frowned upon movement for the sake of movement. He really frowned upon making martial arts flashy for the sake of making martial arts flashy. He really frowned upon traditional systems that kind of created a regimented study of martial arts. He felt that it should be more philosophical ba philosophically based. Um, he really frowned upon running katas. He felt that they were rehearsed routines that led nowhere and ultimately didn't serve the purpose that they claimed to serve. He was very, very critical of all those things. And so if you are a big fan of Bruce Lee, I recommend studying the way that Bruce Lee would have been interested in you studying. If you're looking to honor him with your martial arts journey, seek out first and foremost a Jeet Kune Do instructor. Seek out someone who is teaching the philosophies that Bruce Lee actually believed in. Um, and if there's no Jeet Kune Do instructor around you, seek out a martial art that's less restrictive or study a martial art, but don't restrict yourself to it. The most important thing to understand is what I kind of said in the middle, is that the individual is more important than any race, style, creed, or method of study. That the individual is ultimately what makes the fighter. You take a extremely skilled fighter, uh, martial artist, or extremely skilled athlete, and you put them in any martial arts system, and they'll excel. Because they have what it takes to be good at fighting. But understand that the system itself doesn't really make the fighter. But the system can hinder the fighter. And that's important to understand that if you are looking to become an effective fighter and you study a martial art, uh, you study under a school that their goal is to go uh, to tournaments and win trophies for their katas, well, that school is not going to produce what you're wanting. And Bruce Lee kind of frowned upon that as a whole. So um, I guess the point of this video really is that 
if you are a big fan of Bruce Lee and you're wanting to honor Bruce Lee with your martial arts, seek out martial arts or a study of martial arts that would have been the kind of thing that Bruce Lee would be interested in. Um, and then once you have kind of learned those basics, once you have learned to kind of express yourself honestly through combat, then you can move forward in studying more traditional systems um, if you explore the history and the roots of martial arts. But first get that base, first get the effectiveness of martial arts that Bruce Lee was so obsessed with, and then once you have that, it's, you know, if you want to explore elsewhere, that's pretty cool too. Anyways, that's my two cents on it. If you're interested in studying Jeet Kune Do or the history of martial arts uh, here in Indianapolis, all the information to do so is in the description box down below, or you can check out our website, theschoolofselfdefense.com. Until next time, everybody, I'm Michael Valenti with the School of Self-Defense. Fight on.